as we get into the ways to hurt your opponent, it's important to understand that all the ways we're going to teach have a large pain threshold before there's any damage. This allows us to signal your partner that you're in pain before there's any damage. So for example, if Sergeant Bach was breaking Cooper's arm, as the pain got on, it would hurt, so Cooper would tap. Now it's important to understand you always let go whenever your opponent taps. You don't know how much pain they're in or you don't know when they're going to be injured, so the only one that can be a judge of this is them. You can also signal surrender verbally. So for example, if Cooper couldn't tap, maybe his arm was trapped or something, he could sound off, Ugh, just like that. Now the best way to win a fight is to choke your opponent unconscious. It's the best way because, short of stabbing him or shooting him or hitting him with a brick, it's the quickest way to incapacitate him. It's also reasonably harmless, so that we can do it to each other in training and it's not really dangerous. Now when you choke someone, there's a couple of different ways to do it. One would be to stop the air supply to their lungs. So you can imagine how long that would take. If we had, if you were holding your breath underwater, you could go without air to your lungs for a minute or two at least even under duress. The other way, however, is to stop the blood supply to his brain. Now imagine how long you can go without blood to your brain. So this is a much more efficient method. It's the method we're going to use. So the first technique we're going to do is called the rear naked choke. It's called the rear naked choke because you would do it from the rear mounted position and without the use of your opponent's clothing. So the first thing here, the arm that's over the shoulder. Sergeant Miller is going to bring it around his neck so that his bicep is on this side of his esophagus where the blood supply would be and then bring the forearm muscle around to the other side of his neck and after you've got your arm around his neck you're going to cinch it up just as if you were cinching up your tie and he's going to take this arm now and place it either on his shoulder or in the hook of his own arm just like that this arm now is going to come back like he was combing his hair all the way to the back of his head Okay. He's going to put his face down, because the enemy's only option now is to poke him in the eyes or something. And he's going to finish the choke by expanding his chest and pulling with his back muscles. When you have dominant position on your opponent, either he is inside your guard or you're mounted on him, you can execute the cross-collar choke. It's called the cross-collar choke because it's going to utilize your opponent's collar in order to get the choke. You're also going to cross your arms. So the first thing you want to do is take your weaker hand and pull open his collar. And once you've made an opening there, you're going to insert the fingers of your other hand inside the collar in a nice relaxed fashion so you can get it all the way behind his neck. And then you're going to make a grip. Now once you have that grip, the first hand you're going to let go of and bring it underneath the first the other hand. Fingers on the inside once again, all the way to the back so that your fingers are touching in the back. You're now going to make two grips and rotate your wrists to face you. After you've done that, you're going to finish the choke by expanding your chest and pulling your shoulders back, just like that. And when you're mounted on your opponent, the cross collar choke is almost exactly the same. You're going to open him up, place the first hand in, place the second hand in. The difference is, at this point, you're going to place your head on the ground. Now notice your back is arched this direction. To finish the choke, when you expand your chest, you will arch your back the other direction. Go ahead. To finish them off, just like that. Once again, when you're mounted on your opponent and you're striking him, he may choose to block. If he blocks with the arms parallel like this, which we'll call the standard block, you're going to take both hands with no thumbs and drive one of his arms down to the side. Once you've done that, you're going to drop your elbow down into the elbow notch, and at this point your head would come down on the back of his hand. Now Sergeant Miller is going to bring his head up so you can see the rest of the technique. Your hand that was on his elbow is going to go underneath his elbow and secure a grip on your own wrist. Notice two thumbless grips. Now notice at this time his fingers here are like a paintbrush. What you're going to do is drag that paintbrush along the ground and at the same time you're going to raise his elbow like this. Now notice you can do either one of these actions and it doesn't hurt him. 
but if you do them together, dragging and lifting, you'll blow out a shoulder just like that. So you're striking your opponent from the mounted position. His last option is to try to bench press you off. When he does this, you basically want to decide which arm you want to break. I think Sar Miller is going to break the arm on the far side there. You want to reach over the arm you're breaking and under the other arm. Placing all your weight on your hands, you want to pop up to your toes. Now notice, Sar Miller's butt is low and his toes are near the armpits. At this point, he wants to look and lean away from the arm he's breaking. So his weight is on this leg and on his arms. He can trace his leg around the head. Now he wants to slide down the arm, just like he was sliding down a fireman's pole. He wants to pinch his knees together, grasping the arm with a thumb grip this time. He wants to pull it down to his chest and break the elbow by pushing his hips upward just like this. Now when you practice this technique, you need to practice it first to pop up to your feet, just like this. But later on, whenever you're practicing it, your feet don't actually stop there. It's one continuous smooth motion all the way to end, so it'll be just like this. The straight arm bar from the mount can also be done as a drill. When the enemy bench presses you off, you simply execute the straight arm bar, when you get around to the end, the leg that's closest to the head rotates to the hip and you come back on top. You then bench press you off and you execute to the opposite side. Now do this back and forth, alternating sides. And you can do this as many repetitions as you like. This is the straight arm bar from the mount drill.